Now this is Hollywood Unlocked. What up, everybody? This is Hollywood <laughs> Unlocked Uncensored. I'm Jason Lee. I'm <laughs> Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Yo, it's damaged. Let's get it started. Yo, and Lunell's back. We're yes. laughing at the intro, which we never have because the crazy <laughs> shit that comes out of her mouth. What are you talking about? Yo, this, <laughs> yo, you are our first guest. I say this every time I see you and every time I tell anybody about the show. When we first started the show, we didn't know what the fuck we was doing. Now oh, we're nationally wow. syndicated in 52 markets across the country on iHeart. Hey, man, Jesus, Woo. look at God. <laughs> um, all, in, all in part because I think you really helped us kick off the tone of what this show is. Mm. We just talk shit and keep it all the way 100. I mean, you know. I still watch that episode and laugh because when we were talking about. You looked a hot ass mess. That's why. <laughs> no, no. The first episode, I looked a hot ass mess. Oh. That, that oh. was the second episode. I cleaned my shit up. Okay. <laughs> and then we started talking about the fact that I was on Tinder and you were like, get off of what? Tinder I'm right now. Girl. Listen. I we, missed you on Tinder? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And nobody <laughs> believed that I was on Tinder well, anyway. Don't, don't worry. I'm on there now. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, get Get off of Should Tinder. we leave? Should we leave? No. Okay. And you were like, you, you were trying to see, what about Fetty Wap? And you were like, no. It, no. That shit was so funny. <laughs> yeah. I just told Future, you, you, were too yeah. good, you were too good for yeah, Tinder. Yeah. 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 Okay. That was one of my, it's one of my favorite episodes to this day. And by the way, I brought you a present. You know, we all know that you've been through quite a traumatic situation and I, it's nothing big because where do you get the girl who has the ability to get everything? Mm. Right? Oh, well, I, 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 I am not but aware every, of that. Every girl needs a little automizer of perfume in her bag, just, you know, freshen up and stuff. So I hope you like it, smell it. It came from socks. Damn. You didn't get me nothing, and I was shot. Mm. And you didn't get me nothing, I got raped. So what the fuck? I can't with these two. <laughs> oh. I can't. I'm, not like I'm not laughing this is, at that. This is, this is, this is lovely. Something you this is, this, no, this is perfect. Can we get back right. to the and show? And then put that... This is and then put that in your purse. I would uh, let's let these boys in because they and they feelings. And let me put that right there. This is why I'm gay. This is why I'm gay. Why do you want some perfume? No, (laughs) so you want a little spray? No, because women have no respect for men these days. Right? You just you what? Never mind. Right? I'm not getting off into that. No, after my Breakfast Club interview, um, I woke up to a message, uh, a videotape message Mm. from Lunell, and it was so heartfelt. And she expressed that. Um, you know, she didn't know what to say, um, you know, and she prayed for me, but she didn't know how to get in contact with me or like, or what to say if she got in contact. And then you ended up on set with, um, uh, help me with the memory, um, to Tracy Morgan. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tracy yeah. Morgan. And, and he Tracy had, was talking about uh, his accident because we're both filming Coming to America right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. And to hear Tracy talk about the accident, out of his mouth to me, yeah. it would it would floor you. Yeah, like he's a total walking miracle. There's no reason that he should be put back together after what he went through. There's no reason that he should still have memory or yeah. be able to speak or walk or yeah. dance or, or memorize work, or, work. Line, yeah. or work and have his own show and have lines. Yeah. yeah, but that's the grace of God right there and you too because yeah. anything that anybody has out here can be taken just like. That. Mm-hmm. Just like and that. And that's why you have to you have to just be kind to people mm-hmm. and live your life because you just you know, everything you got ask Kevin. Hello. Yeah, any any anything that happens, <laughs> it no, Hart. in a minute it could just be Hart. gone. So oh, you just Kevin Hart. To, I Kevin thought you were talking Hart. about Wendy Williams' husband. Uh, her, <laughs> her too. <laughs> but no, I just I mean, Kevin, you know, yeah. and everything that you got, money can't by your your health yeah, yeah I, and yeah. and it can get you a health plan yeah. but it can't can't buy your health yeah. you just have to really cherish the fact we were just at dinner last night where she showed me this uh picture post from steve jobs when he was the richest one of the richest men in the world but he was dying of cancer and there was no way to stop it like money wasn't going to stop and it he, don't. Gonna yeah. you better you better hope he, your soul is right you can't take it with you <laughs> and are we he, going are we yeah. going to church today take him we to church. can <laughs> take him. we can yeah. so so listen uh the the movie with uh bradley cooper and uh lady star Gaga. is born yes I, I ain't gonna lie, I watched it, and I watched it three times. Everybody watched and it. And I listened to the soundtrack on the plane. That was a magnificent movie. Fallen, that song, that song just Shallow. Changed. Shallow, shallow. Yeah. shallow. I know it was something, mm. Fallen, yeah. Shallow, whatever. Some shit, yeah. But yeah, some shit. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that song just tears you up. I you know. know, I love it. And Bradley is delicious. Yes, he no is. No doubt. And, and Gaga was, you know, nobody, like I know now how you can have these 
Rock Hudson, Liz Taylor, you know, Richard Burton romances on set. I don't know how you can work with somebody that close. Like, I fall in love at red light. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I love that motherfucker. Okay, but wait, 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 wait. Lonel, did you just spill some tea? Wait. What are you talking about? About them being, you know, booed up oh, on no, no, no. set? I don't know. Because both of their relationships fell apart Went after this shit, movie. Right. But no, both God, of them. they were saying about Gaga and Bradley. Yeah, falling yeah. in love. I mean, yeah. the world thought that there was like a little tryst that came out of that. See, I mean, they were so intimate yeah. that I'd have fucked. I mean, that's, oh, I'd smash either one of them, first of <laughs> all. But, but But I'm just saying, I don't see how you can work that closely with people and not really, you know, and just turn it off. I'm an emotional person myself. You know, just like, uh, you know, Brad, Brad Pitt, Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Angelina. Yeah. You know, I mean, look look what happened, what ha- happened was. It, so it can happen. Yeah, you but know, now she called the authority. When they did that performance afterwards, though, that's when it really got. Awkward. It was, was on the piano done. bench. Yeah, it, it was, was on like, the piano bench. They looked like they were going to kiss. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was like at home saying, do it. <laughs> yeah, but I think that goes back to like the intimacy part. Like Aunt, like uh, even the new girl, uh, Shawn Mendes and uh, Camille, 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 their song, Senior, like when they sing to each other. Yeah. I'm but like, if y'all together? don't fuck and quit, fuck or See? quit. But they're together. They're not together. They were just French kissing. Okay. But you want to I mean, okay. that, and so haven't my, you ever been in Vegas on a wild weekend just and French kiss somebody? Melissa, I, I French kiss somebody at Starbucks this morning. <laughs> that, you I just need a free coffee. Did you really? <laughs> no, of course You're lying. Of course not. I, yeah. I've Nobody only had French one random Vegas situation in my whole life. Do tell. What? Just one. What happened? She You're fucked, in Vegas she a fucked lot. A midget. I'm in Vegas every week. I she did fucked not a midget. fuck a midget. A little person? I did not. Exactly. That's not what we call them here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not talking about any of that. Yeah. Okay. How how are how is Vegas for you? You're you're. I'm in Vegas yes. every Sunday night until mm-hmm. January 5th. Uh, mm-hmm. Every Sunday night, 10 p.m. at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. At the Link Promenade. At the Link Promenade. Nice. I think it's an amazing thing because I have not even met Jimmy yet, but I'll meet him on o- October 28th when I do the show. Mm-hmm. But uh, the club is only six months old. I've been there for months. I'll be there for months, and I'm the first person to have a residency there. When he could have had a man. Mm-hmm. He could have had a white man. Mm-hmm. He could have had a young white man. Mm-hmm. You can't get no further away from that than to get me. Well, okay, we. She has a lot. She's always booked and busy. She's rarely yes. here. You're only here a couple days. I saw your new car, the drop top Mercedes. So you got coins. That's we not got, the new one. Well, whatever. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get into all that. But I got now that we have you here. Like we want to ask you what your thoughts are on things that are happening in okay. the news. Yeah. So, do you really? Yeah, we do. Uh, God, he goes to the end two, of my career. Two words. <laughs> Malik Yoba. Boom. So Malik Yoba said he's trans attracted. You're from the Bay. I'm from Northern California. I ain't never heard of trans attracted. If you're attracted to dick and balls, you either LGBTQIA. Malik, I think the quote was <laughs> that he likes women. He likes all women. He just really, really likes women with tits and a penis. Isn't that what he said? <laughs> right. Okay, so. Was but, that but the now, actual but, quote? That's what he said. But now, right out of his mouth. Wait, but no. now, wait, but now he was supposed to do our show, but he went and did all these other shows because he was talking to hosts who are all heterosexual who have to dance around. Because you know, if you offend the, the gay community, then it's, you're in a firestorm. Which, you won't which, come which, here. Which, which, which can we address that? Yeah, first? wait, wait, but before I just want to know why. Why are we so scared of these gum <laughs> gay people? I don't like, know. Why can we talk about it? Everybody else can talk about niggas all goddamn day. <laughs> Bitches. Like Mexicans all Bitches. motherfucking day. Can't say nothing about the gay folks. But this is why I, I didn't say nothing about the gay folk. I'm just saying why can't we? Why did they gonna scratch you and beat you up? What the fuck? But this everybody's is, fair game when it comes to talking shit. But this is why I said we opened up. There goes a, my career. We op- no, we opened up a dialogue saying, "Look, come on the show and let's have a real." conversation say whatever you want there ain't no perfect word right where and he said he's all pressed out okay th- let me just go on the record and say malik i too have been trans attracted because <laughs> no because i feel like if you like let's say you want to kiss a girl and play with some titties right uh-huh. but if you get dick at the end a little surprise i'm still hetero, I'm still, I'm still hetero. so i'm good <laughs> Like I can go out with some, I know some bad bitches. Them bitches from the Philippines, you wouldn't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Go lady to, boys, lady whatever boys. They call them, lady boys. Go but to, if I'm holding hand with a bitch, we kiss. I play with a titty, and she fucks the shit out of me afterwards. <laughs> I'm just saying. But that's uh, the thing. I'm just saying. If he fucks, if if she fucks the shit out of you afterwards, no, out of me. No, if he but, she fucks no, the shit out of me. No. But if he fucks we're, Malik we're, Yoba, but that's what I'm saying. If Malik, if Malik Yoba is laying down and getting fucked by his female friend with a dick, 
Does, or if he's fucking her. Uh, but either way, nobody but said he, he on top but of either her. way, can he say he's heterosexual? That's what I'm so confused let me just, about. Let me just be clear uh, from the heterosexual, occasionally Vegas bisexual in me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let me just say this. And I, I think I speak for all the sisters south of the fucking 10 freeway, okay? <laughs> you can't suck dick. I say, oh, I only like to suck dick like on holidays or <laughs> on the weekend. Every now and then when I get drunk, I might kiss a guy and suck a dick. <laughs> then, <laughs> I'm just saying. So Malik's gay, and that's okay. Just come Why out. Why don't he just say that? And every now and then, I like my gay man with some titties on. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, what? What? Oh, God. It made me go back and look at New York Undercover in a whole other way. Yeah, that's why his lips always ask y'all the goddamn Luna, time. Let me, let me tell you what, something. What, for wait, from sucking dick? I don't know why. <laughs> He do, but he got ashy lips. You've been having ashy lips for 40 years. <laughs> Luna, let me tell you something. You're Vaseline for that. They do. A- and there are a lot of stuff you grew up on your lips. KY you Jelly. Be, you get the two uh, of you. I'm about to separate the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Vaseline. I remember the first time I fucked the guy, he put that thing up his nose and the poppers and went like that. I thought that was I was. was in the 70s. I thought I was, no, no poppers. he did it yeah, in the 90s. I thought I was poppers fucking a crackhead. I thought I was fucking a crackhead. I wouldn't sniff nothing now the way these motherfuckers. <laughs> we had all the good coke in the 70s. We had all the good poppers. I wouldn't put nothing up my there motherfucking nose. There was never no good coke. You know what, what are you talking about? I got a guy. I got a guy. You know what, I, Lunell, you know what I've always wanted to I, I, try? I got a guy for your ass. So I've, I've only smoked weed and drank. You know, I missed out. I completely missed the fuck out, I think. I never even Molly, no, ecstasy, but you know what really? I've always... Really? Never. No, nothing. I never did not. So you know what I've always wanted to try? Quaaludes. Quaaludes? Well, go, go don't to, say anything go about visit him. Bill Cosby. He's he doesn't have them anymore. He know where the plug is at. He he might he know. He was the last widow. He might. Know. I don't even know what a quail does. It come in a plastic bottle. I don't know it's what a quail is. Is it like, like a capsule? Yeah. This yeah. Is old school. What stuff. happens to you when you take that? Apparently, they make you, you, you get soup. fucked by Bill. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck happens <laughs> shit now back to Malik's lips I'm sorry go ahead finish I'm yeah gonna, I okay. well lips. no she was talking about you know the drugs back in the 70s quaaludes were big she doesn't know anything about them so moving right along but Malik oh go ahead we, why no, did you want to try quaaludes out of all of them though because I watched the Wolf of Wall Street and they said Woo! oh yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah if you ain't sniffed no coke <laughs> off the crack of a bitch's ass you ain't lived Wolf of I Wall Street people that. check it out I think the only time you should take <laughs> quaaludes is if you want to fuck a nigga you don't want to remember well, who doesn't want to do that? Every bitch fucking Bill. <laughs> they, Every, everybody wants to fuck somebody they don't want to remember. Them. That's okay. what Vegas is built on fucking people you don't want to remember. <laughs> so, so you're, so you're, yeah, it is. you're from the Bay Area, and you know we come from an era where like there's a no snitch code. Takashi Six Nine is on the stand giving up everybody's name. I even think he gave up your address for no reason. <laughs> Dude, the game has changed. Is social media changing? Like, what's happening? First of all, who can take anybody serious with all that bullshit on his face and all them got that? I, my, my daughter had a little unicorn with hair like that. What's it called? Rainbow Bite? My pony. Yeah. You can't bang with no rainbow. What the fuck? Who is, what, what's his record? I don't even get it. I don't know. What he's about, all I, I don't even know nothing that he does except snitching, but I'm old. I'm, you know, I'm in the stylistics. I don't know what the fuck I, Takashi Six. Oh, I thought that was Malik. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, Malik is swinging on motherfuckers. Apparently, there's an interview out with him trying to fight yeah, somebody, ask off. him about the dick. He's he going to be mad at me. Don't be mad at me, motherfucker. I didn't make the statement. No. I just repeated the G- shit. Jason and I were talking about it, and it's just like he went on the apology <laughs> tour, and he was just like dipping and diving, and we were like, he been dipping and diving. That's we, the problem. No, he, no, he here should. Talk about no, it. no, no. Nobody was mad at Malik saying he was trans attracted. Nobody. Fuck that. Nobody. That's fine. If yes. that's what you like, that's what you His love. Baby that's your mama business. Wasn't yeah. that but, happy but, about but it. she wasn't happy about it. But, but when they when they started the saying the motherfucker was thirteen, yeah. yeah, that's when the shade came. Well, a lot of people missed that beat though. <laughs> they we missed were, it because they wanted to. They we, wanted to be more obsessed about the, the trans attraction. Have you seen these bitches here? <laughs> more than him is trans attracted out here. But that's when they're 13, R. Kelly. That's where the problem <laughs> That's where the problem comes R. Out. Kelly. But, Me and Jason were saying, he's trying to get in front of something. Mm-hmm. There's something coming. You know. Yeah, you know what's coming. There's something coming. That motherfucking Listen, double uh, entendres. I'm I'm good at them. In front. Well, of, course, of course, something was Are coming. Are they still coming with the, uh, yeah, with the coming. New York undercover his reboot? Na- his name is Tommy. 
mm, Lewis. Mm, no, but I just, I mean, back in, I mean, just something's coming. And they, they, uh, anyway, it was a dick joke. <laughs> the thing that How I'm you not, doing damage? I'm How you doing damage? How you doing so fine? Surviving. Ass. But this is why I said, like, I, me, and, me and Malik have similar <laughs> friends. We already know. Just own it. Nobody would care. Nobody cares. Malik, nobody cares. If you listen, listen, Richard Pryor had a, 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 a trans girlfriend for many, many years. He wrote it himself in the book Prior Convictions. Nobody gave a shit. He okay. put Marlon Brando too, right, or something? I, I don't think that's true. Have you seen Marlon? <laughs> <laughs> but um, maybe back in the Stella, Stella! <laughs> maybe back in those days, mm -hmm. Marlon could get it. Mm -hmm. But not, you know, not, not, oh, Marlon Brando, not fucking him. But, uh, no, Island of Dr. Moreau, not no, those but, days. Not those days. Christ. No, Nobody cared, Malik, honey. You like what you like, but you got to keep it above, above the age limit. That's all. That's so, it. Nicole Murphy, is she invited to the cookout? Yes, the all-girl cookout. She can come to that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave your man around the cow because she's better than you. She's better than me. She's badass bitch. And, you know, she ain't got to steal no motherfucking man. They'll come straight to her. Yeah. So, so who's the blame? Because I mean, most people like to blame the woman. but No, I mean, it's the man. Of course. It's the man. But she, I mean, she was on the Wendy show where she, Wendy was a little lighter. I wouldn't apologize for a goddamn thing. I just said, keep your man's tongue out my mouth <laughs> why, why oh is it that God. she kissed him why isn't it that he kissed her true yeah he the married motherfucker he gonna kick Layla aside because she got fat <laughs> bitch she's not she's thick she's fucking fat just <laughs> like me she's still beautiful but she's not but what, if know, she has a thyroid, but what if she has a thyroid problem well wendy got one too <laughs> the wendy fat came out in her titty that's all <laughs> When no, he it, said she got thyroid. It wasn't thyroid, it was lupus. No, she has oh. thyroid. She has thyroid and she has... Uh, and cankles. <laughs> no, she has a lymph lymphedema. Which gave her cankles. Which gave her thick, swollen legs. Cankles. I'm not going to go there. I love you both. Now, I love Wendy, too. You fucking think I don't? She fucking... We, we did comedy. She came and asked me to help her and stuff like that. She got cankles. So, Nicole Murphy. But that's because of the lipidema. So, Nicole says she accidentally. No, she didn't accidentally kiss him. She just kind of. You don't accidentally him. kiss me. How do you do that? She called you, it. You she called never... it a moment frozen in time. I was like, well, okay. you can't a take a quick. No. If you take one of the quick pictures, stop. <laughs> there you was know. 30 pictures. Yeah. Okay. Of them all over the place in the pool <laughs> together. And that, sitting and down that, together, and that standing up together. And that pissed Lisa Ray off. Ooh. Yeah, you saw that shit. Ooh. Lisa was not there for the bullshit. <laughs> no, she was not. She called it. That yeah. was it. And I'm going to ride with that because, you know. But didn't Lisa Ray mess around with Gary Payton when he was married? Christ oh, wow. almighty. <laughs> <laughs> It was joke. <laughs> no, I mean. I turned around. I mean, both of them are sipping. <laughs> I fucking can't listen to you. I mean, I never spilled that tea when she was like in her grandiose, you know, Queen of the Caicos speech or whatever. But it's like, girl. <laughs> listen. What? Mm. She is an. She's That's a, like me saying to Malik, yo, but say, just say no to Dick. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I read the news. It's okay. a wonderful America when you can really make a show out of this bullshit. Right. right. And come up with it. Somebody at work just <laughs> choked on some something. <laughs> Shout out to Lisa Ray. Why does she keep wearing all white? <laughs> That's been her thing forever she, and ever and ever. She looks good in all white. I think white. When you, after you cheat with a married man, you got to wear red. Black. <laughs> Why is Lou Nell speechless? What's happening? This is my homie. What? Okay, fuck Lisa it. and I have had our moments, but we have reconciled. You pulled our, up on her. Uh, we have reconciled <laughs> our differences. And uh, she just she's had a, a birthday. great mother, and she's a wonderful actress. I love and her. I got shit to say about Lisa motherfucking right. She do her thing. She wear white if she want to. I mean, she must think, you know, I, I mean, you know. You can't call her Lisa, though. She don't like Lisa that. Lisa Ray. Lisa Ray. That's right. I said Chicago. She, she's not for the book shit. Yeah. You know, but I can't hear me. Uh, is this, do you still wear, like, do she, do you still ministrate, though? <laughs> Menstruate or ministrate? Menstruate. Menstruate. Okay. Uh, she's very confident. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I couldn't <clears throat> never not back in my, I'm, oh, I'm past that point right now. I'm oh fat bitch. I'm past that point. Wait, dude. I can wear white every day. Day Wait, now. do women get to a point where they can where they stop having periods? Yeah, stupid. Yeah. Are you really? that you gay and stupid Jason, too? Yes. I'm that gay. Oh. 
Wait, Melissa, what is the age? Is that after men? That's after menopause. After a certain age, oh. and you know, it's just like you 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 don't have a period, and then you do yeah. after a certain age, then you suffer for forty years, and then you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the world. I don't know what the fuck eating that apple fucked us all up. We got fucking periods and childbirth and. Uh, menopause and every goddamn thing. These motherfuckers, if they're lucky, they get prostate. We just wrote a story yesterday on Hollywood Unlocked where a woman, uh, the doctor gave the wrong woman an abortion. What? There's never no, no. They've been trying to sterilize us since the 60s. That bullshit. Ain't no doctor gave no wrong woman. They try to, every time, every man that gets cancer does not have to, every man that gets prostate cancer does not have to end up impotent. This is a systematic genocide the white man is scared of black genitalia. It's a fact and it's been documented. <laughs> well, this woman ain't. She she claims self defense after biting the camel's uh, testicles. Did you did you hear about that? I, I couldn't wait okay, to get to that story. <laughs> <laughs> <Nah. laughs> Melissa, uh, what happened? Because yeah, I I am I I don't know. So I'm gonna read along with everybody else. A Florida woman claims that she bit a camel's testicles in self defense. The strange incident went down when the woman, her strange. husband, and their deaf dog dropped by the tiger truck stop petting zoo <laughs> in Louisiana. They ran into one of the animals, which was a camel named Casper. <laughs> the woman's husband began gave, giving treats to their dog by Casper's gate, and some of them landed in the enclosure. The dog then crawled inside Casper's enclosure. Oh, no. Since the dog was deaf, the hold couple it, was unable it, to... Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> the dog crawled up in the, in the what? So the dog went into the camel enclosure in but ca- the dog in, was deaf enclosure enclosure as in is that, is that ass? no as in cage no, the cage, the cage. Oh, I thought you meant a dog went in the enclosure. Enclosure. okay I, I need more than water in this cup apparently <laughs> Since the dog was deaf, the couple were un- was unable to... The dog to- was deaf. The dog was deaf. deaf. Oh. <laughs> he was unable to bring him back out. Where so the woman... Where shit from? <laughs> from probably probably Deja. Probably Deja wrote this shit. So the woman, so the woman you know climbed I- into the camel's enclosure, not his ass, to go get the dog. She claims the camel became startled and sat on her, so she was forced to bite his testicles. Oh, uh, well, that makes sense. To his- <laughs> the camel sat on her? Sat on her, so she was forced to bite his testicles in order to get... Him I done of sat on a mini motherfucker. Ain't nobody <laughs> never bit my testicles. But anyway. <laughs> well, look, I got one for you. Check this out. Now, look, this is a news article. I'm sorry. Teen masturbated 50 t- 56 times straight before dying of a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Portland fucking Oregon. Teenager allegedly <laughs> masturbated a jaw, jaw dropping 56 times nonstop before, <laughs> before dying of a heart attack. In the process, even breaking the world record and was awarded a world record for masturbation certificate by the Guinness Book of World Records. This fool... <laughs> <laughs> Jerome Carpenter was found dead in his bedroom after apparently masturbating too much. It is speculated that Jerome was suffering from depression due to extreme loneliness and a motherfucker. Ju- and then one hour passed. His mom had called him down for dinner and she went upstairs, found a rigor mortis with his dick in his hand. He had pulled his dick off his body. Now, what I want to know. No. How do you know he masturbated 56 times? Yeah. How do you know? No. What 50, was there 56 pounds of tissue? Was there 56 bottles of lotion? <laughs> like, how the fuck you know? Where this does bo- Guinness fit into this whole... What do you say at his service? He gave Why is there a Guinness Book of World Records because, um, about how many times you can masturbate? Well, I, I mean, I want that job. Well, J- Jason, we just need to start documenting you a little bit closer, yeah. don't we? Yo, you know what's so crazy? Why did I get on this show? You know, I wanted to come on here. I said, this motherfucker's not going to trap me. I'm not going to go in here and talk reckless. I'm not. Yeah. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to be a lady. And I'd be goddamn that we done talked about people going up in enclosures, release chapped lips. This boy done jacked his dick off till it fell off in his fucking hand. Where's the deaf dog? And uh, the dog is deaf. Did yeah, the dog no, make it? The dog, the, the dog made it, but, um, <laughs> you know, the investigated further, the police discovered that the woman had provoked the camel. Oh, well then. Um, so the manager of the petting zoo states that the camel is friendly and plays with the goats all the time. I don't know. Now there's goats involved in the story. Well, you know, there's always a goat. There's always a goat. Yeah. Yeah, Side note, mm -hmm. uh, it just came out on the source that Lisa Ray was just crowned queen mother of Ghana. 
Yeah. <laughs> really? Did you see that? Oh, I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> you know, slaves, the first slaves came from Ghana 400 years ago. So there's this whole movie. Slaves movement. never came from nowhere. That's what they Kings said. Kings and queens came from somewhere. Sorry. And yes, were made yes, slaves. Yes, yes, Be yes, clear on yes, that. Yes, they yes. never brought a slave from Africa. They brought kings well, listen, and queens. I, well, I heard the president of Ghana say it that way. So now we need to send the message to him. We tell mm. your Ghana, Ghanaian people what she just said. There is a... Uh, yeah, there's no such thing as a. And she's as, wearing white on the throne. Too, yeah, no, way. and she looks lovely, but there's no such thing <laughs> well, as um, queen I'm of the central right. region. He's gonna show you. There's, no, there's no such thing. The so, God ain't letting it happen. Well, if they want to make it the fucking queen, and she want to be the queen, she the queen. Let she can see. be honored as words I can't pronounce. Nkosu mm-hmm. Hema. I'm, I probably she said that wrong. She always look good. For good works and humanitarian works, but they are not true queen mothers. The king of the Ashanti king, his wife is not even referred to as queen. She's we all know nothing, but so they, this they, they, this, this is geography who at this point. I just, I just, I sorry, I did a deep dive into he, some homework. Here, here's the deal. Here's, I thought here's you had to deal. be black as his microphone to be the queen of. Uh, well, I know one thing. Her first ruling going to be that Nicole can't come back because they this is the year of the return, so she can't return. I'm sorry, but did you see Holly Robinson Pete jumped into the comments? No, what she said. Holly Robinson Pete is Layla's best friend, and so she, after the Wendy interview, she put a bunch of Pinocchio noses, mm. um, and then B Scott. Uh, came for her. Ne- you saw and that. Saw the text. Woo! He called her a scallywag. I was but like, that was a very weak. But that was a very weak uh, bust out because all they busted her saying that. B-, B Scott showed the text where she said he's a family friend, and then Wendy had her on and she said, "I never said he was a family friend." Okay, so big deal. She Who said she, she, she also said she had nothing to do with the statement that went out. Mm. But why are you hitting up B Scott? Well. Listen. And that's who put the state. That's where the statement came out. Nicole can do what the fuck she wants she because does. a flat stomach and a big ass will rule the world in this city and a until, big mouth until, too. until until the earth don't spin no more. <laughs> and as long as she looks like that, she can do what the fuck she wants to do, and does it. She don't do it alone. Let's hold some of these men motherfucking accountable. Yeah. Well, Let's get off Nicole's dick. And get on um, Fuqua. Well, let me tell you. Let me let me tell you. I went after him because he sent me a cease and desist not to talk about. I'm like, nigga, we gonna oh, talk shit, about don't, it. Don't sir, you, you gonna about to get me sir? <laughs> hey hey, Fuqua. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know. I didn't know. I think the reason why no one could really go after him is because he has no social media presence. Like he's not on social media. That's so. by design. Men that ain't on social media is not on social media on purpose. Melissa's yeah. boyfriend ain't on social media, and neither is mine. <laughs> None of them. I, I like guys like that. So, do you believe? So, Jendina recently did an interview at the Breakfast Club where he talked about wanting to be in a polyamorous relationship. No, he said he was. Oh, do you believe in just being with one person or one per state or one per country? One per no. state. So, mo- you can have more. What is the limit? Because Floyd said you can have as many as you can uh, afford. <laughs> Ask D. Ray Davis, because don't he have two? I think he had bras two. and you know stuff like that. Ask somebody who know about Kevin that. Kevin got two. <clears throat> Kevin who? <laughs> Kevin who has two what? I thought I'm just playing. Be clear. Okay, do, okay, don't don't Kevin talk. Hunter. Oh her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of them is, is a boy, according to the boy. That's what the boy said. <laughs> I'm just saying what the boy said. He did say that. The boy <laughs> said he went up in him. <laughs> that's what the boy said. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily make him gay. Well, that doesn't make uh, 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 a lot of people, a lot of things. People say shit all the time. Personally, I do believe in marriage. However, there are certain circumstances within that marriage that may negate going outside the marriage if your partner may have, you know, I mean, according to the vows, you're supposed to be sickness and health, mm-hmm. richer rich and poor. Yeah. You know, and the other two things. Gay or straight. <laughs> Trans attracted or not. <laughs> you know, it, it, so if a, if a partner gets sick, you're supposed to ride with them, you know. But if they're sick for like 30 years and shit like that, you, you, you know. You drop them off at the place they're going to take care of I them mean, I'm die. just saying you that. Remember, you remember that whole situation with B. Smith 
and how she started to. Yeah. Who is B. Smith? The she, restaurant. She's literally like the black Martha Stewart, mm-hmm. you know? Okay, and okay. so she started to suffer from Alzheimer's, wasn't mm-hmm. it? And her oh. husband went and got a girlfriend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, goddamn, he got to talk to somebody about it. No, he got to fuck somebody. You can't fuck somebody that can't but remember. That's how Me taking... Too came about. I always <laughs> fuck people who can't remember. That's how I. <laughs> what do you mean? That's how Me oh, Too came about. That's how fuck Vegas that. started. I'm telling you no. right now, if I touch your leg, I'd be like, can I touch it? If you touch my leg, it ain't gonna nothing gonna happen for you nor me. So. <laughs> we know you just that. Just be a hand on a leg. No, but like you got to get permission these days. You got to have people. You got to take pictures. You got look at Antonio Brown. He his whole career is gone because no, he allegedly. rich people do. Rich, that's rich people problem. Nah, clout too, because you're famous and you out here. You you clout. Oh, that's true. I don't just anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I can't. Well, that's why I don't. You know, I, that's you don't why fuck I, fans no more. Let <laughs> 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 me think about that one. Well, I mean, it's hard not to find a Lunell fan. You know what I'm saying? It's just you no. Know. You're the funniest. I'm telling you, I've been seeing you forever. I mean, the shit you. I just remember when you when I first saw you do stand up, you were just saying things that I had never heard a woman say publicly. Can you believe it? And 30 years later, the times have caught up to me because mm-hmm. I literally have not changed a damn thing yeah. since I ever started. But I, I never, <clears throat> when I started doing comedy, I didn't do comedy because I wanted to do comedy to become famous because when I started doing comedy, there was no Def Jam, there was no Comic View. Mm-hmm. There was no money. There was no nothing. It was El Torito's. It was, it was El Torito's. And maybe you might get a cocktail, maybe <laughs> yeah. some nachos. But um, I did it because, you know, I'm an eighth of eight kids. and Nobody listened to fuck to me. And uh, I just had a lot of shit on my mind, a lot of shit to say. And I think I'm right 99% of the time. So that gave me a vehicle to do that. But all this other being in a career and doing stuff is is news to me. I'm still waiting on the bag. I can be <laughs> as popular as the fuck I want to be, but I'm still waiting on the bag uh, so I can get the fuck off the crime scene. You know, I live two blocks away from the marathon shop. Somebody get me the fuck out of this moment. Oh, my God. What did, you, what did you think about that whole Nipsey situation when he was uh, gunned down like that? Man, well, I'm very careful about what I say about that because I don't, I don't fuck around mm-hmm. and I don't play about that situation. Mm-hmm. It was uh, for other people north of the 10 freeway, out mm-hmm. of the state and all that, it's a newspaper article that has faded. But for us in that community, it's like somebody has turned the light on a dimmer switch and it's gone down. There's people still walking around and living, but Nip's presence is felt mm. always. It's murals and, you know, things on every corner, you know, and it's his area, period, dot. And um, your heart breaks for Sam. Your heart breaks for Imani and 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 cross the boss you know your heart breaks for lauren we want to know where they are they're so secretive and tight and they got the <clears throat> closest knit you know sector that i've ever ever seen nobody's talking they don't put up with no ratchet shit they shut reggie bush and his little fucking go fund me down yeah like that we don't need that shit wait what and was that reggie he started and, a GoFundMe account to give money to the family without as talking to f them. as f so they shut that down, had to give everybody's money back. It was, a, it was a tragic situation I've lived through in my lifetime. Even when I was a little girl, I've lived through Malcolm, Medgar, Kennedy King, Kennedy, Big Pac. That's seven assassinations. This is my daughter's first one. Mm-hmm. And I had to nurse her through that. And it's in our community. We passed the marathon shop every day. I passed it today. And the things that he was trying to do you know, you have to listen to the conspiracy thing. You have to think maybe they was trying to shut him down. Maybe he was doing too much. Maybe they don't want us to unite. Maybe they don't want it. You know, they're trying to bring all that gentrification down. Crenshaw did and took all the history away. You know, the sideshow is gone. The mur- you know, the artwork is gone. The memories from Boys in the Hood, that's all gone. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to make Crenshaw look like the fucking Grove. Well, Nip was going to be part of that. You know, he owns not just the Marathon Store, other buildings. Mm-hmm. Had a collaboration with Puma. He's got this other stuff. And it make you think, like, God damn it, maybe I can do it. So with me still being in the community, I feel like when I used to hide and not want people to bother me, now I feel like I should be out there and let people see me because there is somebody still here who's letting you know that, you know, you can be of the commun- you can be in the community and not of it. You can be here and you can still do things that are productive and positive and show other people the way. So I don't fuck around, I don't joke, and I don't play 
when it comes to talking about that. And and that's that's the way it is. No, and you know, you could feel the uh you could feel how genuine it is too, because I did feel and I was on the Breakfast Club and talked about this to Charlemagne that when he died, it became a talking point. When he was killed. When he was killed, yeah. mm-hmm. when he was murdered, he it became a talking it came, it became a popular thing for yeah. a lot of people who didn't really know him or weren't in the community to do. And I've and that it's just like I want to be successful in the game and we want to be on and we want to do it. But then there's that other side of it, too, where you like you don't want to be a part of no fake shit. Well, there's nothing fake about Nip or his family or anybody or anything like that. Uh, they don't put fake motherfuckers funerals up at the Staples Center. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was amazing. OK, they don't put gangbangers or ex gangbangers funerals at the Staples Center. They don't do a 25 mile victory lap through every gang community in the South Central area for fake shit. It wouldn't have worked. You know, even the police that day, they let them motherfuckers ride. Listen. They spray painted the police car and they let it go. Listen. They stood on police car and they let it go. Tell and they it. said, let's let these motherfuckers mourn or it's going to be a bloodbath in these streets. I was and at the thing. Staples Center and I remember they tried to tell some of his close shit. homeboys where the VIP was. They couldn't get in because it was the VIP. What? They grabbed him and moved him out the way as the whole uh, group walked in. And I will say, they did a good job of respecting it because it was it was a feeling that like the smallest thing could have set off something it, really, it, it, really, very, really, very, yeah. very, 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 very uh, close under under our skin. Yeah. If you're in that community, and I am, you know the streets I go up and down. He went up and down. I lived between the Marathon Shop and his grandmother's house, 59th and Fifth Ave with Vanilla Wafers, 59th Elementary School where he went to school. That's all me there. Mm-hmm. The slots and swap meet, the grocery stores, the market, everything he went to. I used to go to the Marathon Shop. I've got the vape. I've got the hats. I've got the sweatshirts. I supported him. I didn't have the CDs mm-hmm. because I said, well, I, I also talked shit about. The vape, I was like, a hundred dollars? <laughs> how, how do you get off this motherfucker? <laughs> but then, you know, I knew what it was about, and and, and I supported it, and, I, and I, I got it. But, you know, there's a lot of shit I joke about. I don't joke about it. Being in the, I want to say, being in the community, um, you know, Nipsey was really attempting to create a permanent ceasefire between rival gangs, gangs. Right. What has the, you know, uh, response been since his death? Have they kind of honored that? You know? I'm not in a fucking gang. I don't know no, what the I motherfuckers know, are doing. I know, but, no, but you live in the neighborhood. But, yeah, but, so. <laughs> I, I, I think that, I mean, there's still beefs, you know. Yeah. There's always going to be beef. But but there's. I don't think that the carnage is as, I think they're taking a a, a, a breath yeah. mm-hmm. before they mm-hmm. actually go out, you know, and, and, and do destructive shit to our people. Mm-hmm. I think that if we, if, you know, if, if the Crips and the Bloods and the, Pyrus and all that got together. They'd be stronger than the fucking army. No, for sure. And the police don't want that. They want us to keep continuing yeah. to kill ourselves because that's you know what they think of us. They they do things to to, to make you think that you know. And then, then you get a old bitch ass motherfucker like uh, Eric Holder to do your dirty work for you. But I but I I don't understand. I, I'm not really about that thinking that he killed Nip for the government. Because you don't get no advantage out of it. Like, he's locked up. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear his little tra- bitch is about to have a baby or something <laughs> like that. You know, I, I, you can't do that and think, well, oh, I'm going to get away with this because he's locked up. I do think it was petty-ass, jealousy-ass thing. Yeah. But I do think that, you know, you know, it worked to the advantage of the people who were trying to hold him down. I mean, it was good to hear you talk about that because I think it, it just makes it more real, you know? And I look at it from where I come from, and I think when Big and Pac died, we didn't see them get killed. So there was a- the- Right, we didn't see it. Yeah, and that was the camera. kick to the head that was seen around the world that took me out. Like, I, I, I literally, I, I, I took to my bed, literally. And the helicopters flew for six days straight, all day and all night. And the thing that Pac said, it, he said, I may not be the one to change the world. But I'll spark the flame in somebody who will change the world. So Nip was that person. There'll be another at some point mm-hmm. that will pick up where he left off, mm-hmm. you know. And then there'll be somebody after that. We will overcome at some point. So when you talk about your daughter, last time you were here, I said she was grown. You said no, she not because she live in your house. Is she still grown? Is she grown yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> she still. She don't live in my house. She lives in my studio apartment, which really cramped my style because that used to be my thug spot. While we bring my little thug. Your honeycomb what hideout. Is a, what is a thug spot? <laughs> when you don't want a fucking nigga in your house and you got a little thug spot down the street. 
She fucked all that up for me. <laughs> so now I had to have serious relationships. So I just watched uh, Tiffany Haddish's uh, They Ready. And uh, there was, uh, what's the girl's name? Flame Moreau. Have You know Flame Moreau? Very well. Hilarious. Right. I just Been thought, hilarious for years, though. But that's what I was going to ask. Is it is is comedy? Because I feel like comedy is on a surge now. Is it? Does it go up and down? Or is it? do you feel it? Or am I just late to the party? No, I think, you know, there's a lot of things are changing. But there's... There's a little divisiveness now between OG comics, you know, mm. who feel a certain way, and the the newer comics. Mm-hmm. Because I know that when I came up, I studied comedy. I didn't just jump out there and do yeah. it. I ran behind the Ronaldo Rays. I ran behind the Laura Hayes. Mark Curry was from Oakland. He left and came out here and showed us how to do it. And I, when I moved to L.A., I went out to every club for like a year. Mm-hmm. and didn't even try to get on the mic. I just watched what works in this room, what works in that room, what what is this audience like, what is that audience like, what do they like, what do they don't like, mm-hmm. and I did that, and I think I have the ability to still do that now. You shouldn't talk about the same thing you talk about in L.A. and fucking Mississippi. Yeah. You shouldn't talk about the same shit in Mississippi as you do in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. You need to be flexible, be changed, but with the advent of... Um, the Insta shit, I, 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 Insta I think shit. that they should be called Instagram celebrity, mm-hmm. Instagram entertainers, mm-hmm. Instagram performers, because really what they are is actors. Mm-hmm. They're not comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't be a comedian in a one-minute video. You just can't. Would that be considered Even, a sketch? Yes, okay. those are sketches, and they're actors, and they're good. But that doesn't mean that that translates to Getting up being at a stage. club in front of people because you, know, you can't edit. And you don't have one minute. Oh, oh, you, now you, oh, got you can't edit the audience out. And I'm no, gonna no. tell you, when we mm-hmm. wilding out, Nick Cannon knows not what. <laughs> I'm not a comic, but I talk mm-hmm. shit. So yeah. I go up there and I talk shit. Most of my shit has landed. Some of my shit hasn't. Right, it's not but, just enough I, to talk shit. You gotta talk good shit. But I don't disrespect the comedians in the room mm-hmm. to act like I'm one of them. I I've it. seen you fall back. I've oh, seen you oh, fall back. You, Carlos Miller, <laughs> Chico Bean, like there's they do what they do, and mm-hmm. they're the best. And I sit back and I and I'll go to them and say they're, they're good. They're not the best. They're the best on the show, is what I'm saying. Oh, they're on the show. They, they're the best right now that we have. But my point is they're that good. Nick they're brought really Nick good. brought a lot of Instagram people mm-hmm. in, and yeah. we was in you know workshops trying to work and learn these uh, games jokes with these uh, not the jokes, but you know learn the yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like. They're and quick. They, what they're, they are, they're very, very quick. They're very, very sharp. Yeah. They're quick and they're but sharp, they're and they have to be. Yeah. But, you know, you're doing stand-up, you know, doing stand-up. Like, I'm in Las Vegas, first of all. You you, you can't, they, they don't fuck around in Las Vegas, baby, mm-hmm. at all. By the way, quit asking me for free tickets, motherfuckers, because it's Vegas. <laughs> I done gave away free, free tickets for 30 goddamn years. Don't ask <laughs> for none in Vegas. Buy a ticket like you do for every other goddamn show in Las Vegas. Uh, that was a public service announcement. Okay, <laughs> but y- you will not get on the stage in Las Vegas permanently just being an insta fuck just because you can sell <laughs> insta fuck tickets. You know these motherfuckers say, "Oh, you washed up old ass bitch. Ain't nobody thinking about you. You ain't no just hilarious. You ain't." <laughs> I'm like, okay, bitch, but <laughs> they don't say that, do they? Yeah, they do. Really? And they mean it. Yeah, yeah, they say it. But it's okay because I got thick skin. If I was a bitch to cry, my teacup i wouldn't be you know doing what the fuck i'm doing I'm like they okay they say this on social media they say it to me yeah sure oh, but I, and i block <laughs> uh, you know I, I almost broke my motherfucking finger blocking the block bitch <laughs> block fuck you block you but but they've got a lane i'm saying they've got a lane but people are like, oh i want to be an actor i want to do this do you know how much reading you have to do to be an actor mm. do you know how, how the memory you memorize yeah. scripts you have to memorize scripts and blocking at the same time. Yeah. You have to interact with other people. You can't just get on TV and say what the fuck you want to say. You have to really be trained for that. Mm. You have to go to school. You have to learn the English language. You have to be able to enunciate and pronunciate and know, you know, know your words. It's not just you and your phone. It's not you and your phone. But these motherfuckers really have good acting careers ahead of them. But I take issue with them calling with, with people calling them comics, you, the comedic actors. Would to you me. would you would you consider DC Young Fly a comic? Well, he's doing comedy. <laughs> he does stand up. He, he's funny. He does like his tour. The yeah, but see the way you track. said that, the way the tonality. When you say he's funny, no, I mean you didn't say he's funny. No, well, I mean that's the difference. Well, I do. Well, let me say it differently. On the show, because I don't go to comedy shows. I don't go to anything. I don't go to. You're any. gonna come to Vegas and see me. Of course, I'm gonna come and see you. I mean, but you're 
you're beyond funny. It's just the, it's so reckless and it's. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to read the comments on this show, by the way, because they're going to tear me the fuck up. Yeah, well, they tear me up. I don't give a fuck. That's okay. Fuck But, but no, DC Young Fly is doing his thing. He's making a lot more money than I am, which is, you know, unfair, but that's just a fact <laughs> of life. And uh, he's got a good team behind him, and, 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 and he's fine. I just take issue with anybody being cocky, you know, or, or conceited or thinking that you run the motherfucking world. Because, you know, for everybody that's over here that we know, there's comedians in Canada, there's comedians in Jamaica, mm -hmm. there's the comedians in Spain that, 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 that are way more intelligent to, uh, than us. I've seen them. And they're funnier than shit. Gina Yashere is a black woman from London. That bitch is funny. Mm -hmm. She used to be on like Letterman or something like that and doing sketches and stuff on there. They don't even know who she is, but I know who she is. And she made so much money in London, she had to come over here because you, you reach a, a ceiling mm -hmm. over there, but you don't have a ceiling over here. You can make as much money as you want. They're going to do specials. Those boys and girls are going to be fucking fine. They don't give a fuck about what, what I got to say. But uh, but since you asked, you know, I, I, I think that they're doing fine. Let them do their thing. We'll see. You know, nobody goes into this to be a legend. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes into this to say, 30 years down the road, I'm going to be a legend. I didn't know that I was going to be in the game 30 years. I didn't know that. I didn't know that you could make a career doing this when I started. I, I didn't know. Yeah. I was just being somewhere where I could talk freely and get shit off my mind so I wouldn't shank motherfuckers on the street. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this on stage because I got a criminal background. Everybody knows that. And um, I, 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 I do this because I love it. I don't feel like you should do comedy for money. I don't feel like you should do it for clout. I feel like you shouldn't do comedy unless you feel like you're going to die if you don't do it. Is Lonnie Love a bully? <laughs> she can be. Because but I, we all can be. I, I can be. But I've been watching the her and Tamar back and forth with the whole, you know, it's kind of, you giggling. Is Tamar back on the show? No, she went on Wendy. Hell um, no. She, okay, she I went on I Wendy something. and then Lonnie was like, girl, you can stop by on the show if you want. You know, it was like kind of cute shade or whatever. Tamar kind of slapped back. I'll tell you what what, what, what I, I, I I did take issue with. I went on, I went on the show to promote, I think, my Vegas residency at that time. And, um, you know, I guess Lonnie has taken on the uh, the Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, uh, that's uh, what I, I thought that same you know, moderator, uh, okay. moderator. Yeah, the moderator part. And so when I went out on stage, I was so happy to be there. And I came out and I was doing like this to the ladies. And Lonnie said, come on in there, we ain't got time for all that shit. <laughs> and pulled me right past Adrian Bailon. So I never got a chance to hug her. And it looked like I shaded Adrian. And I was extremely hurt. And I was really pissed. I mean, you don't have time for me to... Do to, you? To, to give you uh, uh, praise. A, a prop, praise? Yeah. And, and don't talk to me like that by the motherfucking way. So. And you're funnier than her. Well, I mean, no shade. That. I've been on all the shows now that I'm out here in these streets, and I will tell you, that's a show I haven't been invited back. Although I know Adrian is a fan of Hollywood a lot. We DM and she follows and all that. But I know, I mean, anyway, I know why I'm not back on the show. And that's I, okay. I know why I probably won't be back either. <laughs> Well, because of this shit right here. That's fucking funny. <laughs> okay, Lunell, you got some really dope projects in the pipeline. Like, I'm really looking forward to Dolomite. The premiere is Saturday. Dolomite. I am looking so the 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 um, trailer for it is so funny. Um, both of them are Eddie Murphy projects. Yeah, he's literally like just I don't know just he's back out. He here. is back, you know. So you're gonna yeah be he in. about to everybody can sit the fuck down and yeah. get their popcorn and and watch how it's done. So if you do it right, you can sit your ass down for ten years. That's what if you do it right, you can sit the fuck. But down. he didn't really sit down. He just did some quiet projects. He did this right. movie called Mr. Church. Right, Mr. that Church. I really love. Really, really good. I cried my. Face off looking at wasn't this And so... then he did the voices. He yeah. did, you know, uh, animation shit. Yeah. But basically, he sat down and did that shit. I you mean, that, I mean? Mo <laughs> that motherfucker's worth $600 million. Jeez. He's worth And got 10 Eddie? babies. Yes. And he needs all of it. Well, yeah. Nicole, Nicole gonna need a stipend after the baby Nicole turns 18. Nicole gets a stipend, be clear. But her baby turned 18 next year. That's one other motherfucker. That's she the got last, a whole. No, that's that the, the last, last one. one. Yes. Oh, no wonder she back out in these screams. Oh, Nicole. Okay, Nicole. I ain't making Nicole try to get that bag. She would have. Uh, it was somebody else's bag. Straight, straight, straight hand. She should have stayed with straight. Straight hand, hand put a, a tracking device on her car. If you ain't, out, thought, there, if you ain't yes. out there fucking up, you ain't got nothing to worry about. He caught about. her cheating. He yes. She's she a was serial a, cheater. She was exchanging notes with Lisa. We don't know here. why her and Eddie broke up. Now do we? Maybe she cheated then. Uh, well, Malik, no, Malik Yoba no. seems to have an trans idea as to why. Attraction. Malik Yoba said it anyway, too. But so, are you nervous at all about? 
coming to America and remaking such a legendary movie. Well, it's not a remake. Absolutely it's like a sequel, right? Absolutely not. First it's not a remake. All, it, I'm sorry. Not a remake. Sequel. It's not a sequel. remake. It's not a reboot. It's a sequel. I can tell you this, and I'm glad to have this platform to say this. In all the film and television projects that I've ever done in, in L.A. and otherwise, I've done some great ones. And I've done some shit. This is the best script I've ever read in my career. Wow. Really? First of all, it's the happiest set ever because everybody's back. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, John Amos. Oh, my God. I've got pictures that I can't post, but I can show you. Uh -huh. And I just, I mean, the girl that met him when I met him, she just burst out crying. That I didn't have a father growing up in you or my dad. John Amos, best black father ever been on TV. Period. Dot McDowell's. Barnard. Wait, he's still alive? And he, yeah. yeah, alive. Uh, everybody's back, yo. Oh, okay. Soul Glow. Lisa? Back. Lisa. Sherry back. Headley. Eric Everybody's LaSalle. back. Oh, nice. Uh, 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 uh. Um, Arsenio, James uh, Earl Jones, L Louis Anderson, oh, back. No. Everybody, everybody back. Mortimer and, and she's the what? Queen. She's back. They're back. Everybody no back. Way. Everybody's back. <laughs> That's dope. Everybody's back, and it's the happiest set. And you go there, and you got Ruth Carter, who won the the Oscar for doing the Black Costuming. Panthers. Yeah. She did Dolomite and Coming to America, as did I. And, um, <laughs> and I'm still filming, by the way. And um, it's just a wonderful fucking place to be, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, they take it, they 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 do it. They have a new catch in the new one, mm -hmm. and they tie it all together in a nice, beautiful, tender, amazing package. Can anybody talking shit about the sequel? Don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Is Samuel Jackson coming back? You know, he was scheduled to be back, but I heard that he had a, a conflict and he didn't do it. But he may have taped it and I don't know. Mm. So, but yeah, he was supposed to be back because Louis what? Anderson back. McDowell's is alive and well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. McDowell's is alive and well. But it's a wonderful script. Craig Brewer, African-American friendly. He did Hustle and Flow and Dolomite and Coming to America. You know, and uh, it's just going to be amazing. What's the projected release date? Is there, is any Christmas 2020. Oh, my God. Shit! Damn. Sorry. God! I know, that's what I damn. hate about doing movies, because you got to wait so well, First of all, long. this movie's going to make, if not a half a billion dollars, a billion dollars, a it'll half a billion. It'll probably make a billion. Yeah, I think so. It'll probably and make then, a and billion. And then it'll show that black film and black actors and actresses are, like, important. Mm -hmm. Well, Panther showed that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and Panther's coming back again, you know. Oh, shout out to my boy, the one, the Oscar, the, what is it, Emmy? The other day. Gerald right? Jerome. Gerald Jerome. Yeah, that was Ooh, a great moment. That was so wonderful. That was a great moment. That was so wonderful. Yeah, but it was still Emmy so white because as far oh, as I'm yeah. concerned Niecy Nash needed to also pick up absolutely. the statue and Ava and Ava and, and Ava. Ava absolutely no, uh, um, uh, um, Beyonce should have won for uh, Homecoming and yeah, she lost that, to Carpool Karaoke that's why I said Emmy so white Emmy so white yeah it's unfortunate but Jarrell Jerome we are all very happy that's why they got the goddamn Soul Train Award shit <laughs> do you well, have, shit really goes so do you have a, and the NAACP awards which I don't get to attend neither one of the motherfuckers do you have a book yet uh, it's in the making, but we have a dispute. That every every publisher, and I'm not trying to self-publish, every publisher that I talk to, they want me to make this light, airy, picture book, fun, happy, and I don't want to do that. I want to talk about, you know, the murders in my family. I want to talk about the rapes and the incest and the drugs and the shit so that people know that you can come out of that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to succumb to all that shit. You can take all that and build on that and be somebody, you know, and that's the book that I want to write. And until they want me, until they are ready to get on board with that, I won't be writing. No I'm surprised book. that they wouldn't want you to say some of that, because like literally the the fundamental basis of being a comic is to know complete and total sorrow. I see a role. You know? I see a series of romance novels. <laughs> For, no, for real. I don't believe in romance. No, but that's what I'm saying. From a, <laughs> I from, a, in from a comedic, from a comedic, right? That's what I'm saying. That's what a romance novel for, with your voice and mind would be hilarious. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna hook you up with Zane. That's what I'm gonna hook you up. Oh, with. I know Zane. Then I met Zane on it, the Soul Train. Uh, put it together. Maybe Zane. Zane might get you would it. Be, I don't know. You would, it would be hilarity. Like, well, I it wouldn't be, be funny because Zane shit ain't funny. Zane shit make you sit home and go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Zane Zane shit is 
hot. Yeah, she's a sick. And and remember, Zayn had that show. It was a show mm-hmm. on uh, Zayn Chronicles. Zane yeah, Chronicles. that was that was that was smoking. Mm-hmm. I used we to watch all them finance. My agency wanted me to go out for one of those roles. I read the script and I was like. You know, I've always liked Melissa. She did. I liked her before she even knew who the fuck I was. No, I've always everybody. known who you were. Always known who you were. Always. Well, I didn't. I didn't like her before I knew who she was because every nigga I wanted wanted her. Well, you need they to stick do. with the gay boys and quit fucking with the straight. <laughs> Sort of gay boys. Never. <laughs> I'm, the oh, br- like rough I'm the bridge. So when I talk about trans attraction, so you like... no, I'm a trans attracted too. Transportation, airlines, buses, and trains. And Uber. Let's be clear. Oh, Uber too. Mm-hmm. So you don't drive. No. Why? There is a good question. Why? Yeah. Why? Well, because you like. You know, I like to listen to my own music. I like to smoke weed. <laughs> but I, I got pulled over today. Thank God I wasn't smoking weed in the car. Ooh. Hancock Park, white cop. Because I went straight on the street that you're not supposed to cross and only make a right lane. And I told my, 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 my friend, I told my friend, I said, I'm glad I wasn't smoking in the car because I don't want to give him no reason to ask me a goddamn thing. Yeah. You know, because legally you can blow smoke in the motherfucker's face out here in L.A. But then when they bash <laughs> your fucking head in, don't say nothing. You know? Your friend is younger than you. You like him young. They like me, motherfucker. Let me tell you something. That's true. I don't go out stalking none of these motherfuckers. Me okay? neither. Never. Speak I'm on too, it. I, I, I don't handle rejection well. Me neither. If I go try to holler at somebody, they're like, get your old ass out of here. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to the house for a month. But, uh, you know, that's what's wrong with these bitches. Stop trying to like somebody that don't like you. Find out who like you. See, can you like them? Right. Shit. Right, Jason? Right. God damn it. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah, see who like you. So Man, they like I, me because I'm a fun bitch. Why? Then my age don't go for me. It's all the young guys that want me. And they and they should. You should have took Davies down. Ain't nobody got time for these trap you, holes. They having babies. You should have took Davies down the night we met him on the street because he, he was, was, was still was, involved with his they baby They were ending mama. their relationship. He could yeah. always be involved that. with a baby mama. Okay. That's what a baby mama is. But he no, he was like in they were involved. No, he was trying to hit Wendy at the club. Okay. He was trying to hit Wendy. Oh, he was trying to get up in that. Wendy okay. Williams? Yes. All right, listen. <laughs> Are you, no, do you this think they're serious? Who? Anybody? No. Who, what is serious? Serious is like what's happening right now. Like what, what? What do you think they want with Wendy? What niggas want with every woman? No, no. What do you think they want with Wendy Williams? What fame? Young, okay. Fame? Right. Fame whores. Fortune. Mm-hmm. Spoiled. She's not doing any of that shit. Nothing she ain't no trick. She ain't no trick. She ain't no punk. She ain't either. even gonna send you an Uber, bitch. If you can't get to the house <laughs> to get the pussy, she's been very clear that if you ain't got a good job, she ain't even trying to hear it. She want to get married again. Why? Exactly. Ugh. I'm like Wendy. Snap out of it. Honey. You're my spirit animal. But she was okay with the ten year relationship. It was the baby that pushed over the edge. And she said she had to plot it out. Her kid was still in the house. Yeah, yeah, that, that was know? a good thing. Yeah. That was a good thing. She plotted that out well. But you know, the 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 young 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 guys that like older women, they want to eat. <laughs> they want you know new you shoes. Usually, you usually got a house. <laughs> you know they want to be comfortable. They don't want no drama. We ain't trying to give you no baby. You can have a lot of fun, and you know if you if you work work your twist right, you might get a couple little presents, shit like that <laughs> trip or two. <laughs> really, all bitches need to know if you fucking with these young motherfuckers, you must pay. Stop thinking that they're gonna save up their little Chipotle check and take you to fucking Jamaica, bitch. It's not gonna happen. And I, you gotta pay, bitch. That's what it is. And I'm gonna say to all the young niggas out there, quit being afraid to slide in the DM. Just slide in the DM. You slide might get a trip. Slide in the DM. You never know what might. You happen. might get a trip. All right, we got to get out of here. We done ran out of time. You know, now, listen, I want to say this. No matter where this show goes, no matter where I go, you're going to have to always come back because you are our first guest, and you set the tone for all the recklessness that no, we've gotten in trouble about. Yeah, you did. I yes, you that. have. Malik is somewhere right now licking his ashy-ass lips saying, <laughs> fuck oh, all of y'all. I, I know he's saying, fuck me. <laughs> no, but, no, no. He, actually, he's not saying, fuck you. <laughs> no, he's not. I don't have a dick. But but that's okay. I mean, I act like I got Wait. one. I swing my balls pretty low, but I, I don't have a dick. But I, I, I just want to say that, you know, it is a miracle in this day and age, I'm going to say it again, that you can take a motherfucking show like this and actually get iHeart pick it up. You know, it's a, I mean, you know, people want to... There's a, there's a there's a market out there for motherfuckers who keep it 100. Mm-hmm. There is. And if it wasn't, I wouldn't have a career. There's a market out there for people who just cut you to chase, who try to be polite and all that bullshit. Because what's what, what they going to beat you up? 
Well, they might be you. Well, you have to think about it too. At the end of the day, you have a daughter. I have fa- my, I have myself, my fa- my family. I have my future. I have my dreams. My dreams are bigger than hurting people's feelings. So, I mean, I'm a. <laughs> <laughs> I said that, you know, Wendy and Charlemagne have told me I'm gonna get punched in the face. And I said, I am ready, I am ready for it. Cause I'm not gonna stop. It's just the beginning. But no matter where we are, Although you gotta be loving hip hop, I don't know, bro. Well, the only reason I went back was to tell my dead brother's story. So and I've done that and now And this season you didn't throw no drinks in no bitches' faces. Not, no, not at all. I ain't got time. I'm Next too busy. time you get confronted, just go and slap a bitch. Don't do that because that was a bitch move. You should just slap the bitch. <laughs> no, because that I didn't even know I was gonna you I didn't want to get sued. I, I didn't even thought I was going to throw the drink. It was a blackout moment. But, you know. We, oh, okay. Just like the kiss was a stolen moment between. Stolen, stolen moment. moment. It was a moment all frozen, frozen moments. in time. Y'all got all these motherfucking moments. I stand behind my story. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you here, Lunell. Anything you need at Hollywood Unlock, we got you. And follow me on Instagram at Lunell at L-U-E-N-E-L-L. Slide in my DMs if you's a baddie. But um, a dumb. How you going to say that when you got a nigga sitting right there? We're new. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're very new. And go to your website. It's heylunel.com. Yeah, heylunel.com. Come see me in Las Vegas at Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. Check me out on uh, Jimmy Kimmel, October 28th. And check me out on Dolomite Is My Name. Coming out this month, well, October. And um, see you at Christmas 2020. And your comedy coming CD. Coming America. Yep. My comedy CD, I only drink at work. You can and get the, it on my website. And the book that you need to write. And the mm-hmm. book that I need to write. And the audio book. What if you want a Grammy from your audio book? True. Oh, my God. Just, I'd, I'd buy it. <laughs> You're dreaming big dreams for me, Jason. <laughs> All right. Well, we love you, Lil' Now. We out of here. Thanks, everybody. Peace. Yeah. Bye, everybody.